Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. So a little over a week ago, a rumor was heavily reported that Doctor Who's Karen Gillan was being considered as the lead for a new Pirates of the Caribbean film, with Jack Sparrow maybe returning as well. Whether this rumor is true or not is kind of beside the point for me, honestly, because what I found a lot more interesting than that was the internet's reaction. Well, lack of a reaction, really. Unlike rumors of a new MCU, Star Wars, or even Star Trek project online, it just seemed to sink like a stone. There seemed to be a big collective shrug as people just moved on with their day. Now, to be fair, maybe this is just my side of the internet. I'm sure there are places online where the news was met with tons of passion and opinions. But I just can't shake the feeling that Pirates, despite being one of the biggest and most expensive franchises in movie history, has kind of been left in the dust. It's heyday feeling more and more distant with each passing year. The easy reason for this would be, well, a lot of the movies weren't that good. And while that probably has a lot to do with it, it still feels a little strange that it's as under-discussed as it is. After all, they've made plenty of bad Star Wars, James Bond, and Star Trek movies, and those all have a super massive, opinionated, and engaged fandom to this day. So what makes Pirates, a franchise that featured one of the most iconic characters of the 2000s, feel so forgotten in comparison? I think it's an interesting question, and it's one that I'm going to try to explore here. Oh. Not good. Live the life of a notorious pirate as you join Jack Sparrow and thousands of players in Pirates of the Caribbean Online. Rewatching Pirates of the Caribbean Curse of the Black Pearl recently, I was kind of surprised by how well it holds up. This thing moves like a freight train, but it never really feels rushed either. And while I wouldn't call these characters complex, the cast does a great job of injecting some life into what could have been a very run-of-the-mill script. The CG still looks pretty solid in most places, and those practical stunts are still as fun as ever. Basically, Curse of the Black Pearl deserves all the praise that's been heaped on it over the years, and it's a lot better than a movie based on a theme park ride from 1967 has any right to be. It's very well known at this point that Disney absolutely hated Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow before the film opened, convinced that audiences would find the performance far too weird and off-putting. They put a lot of pressure on director Gore Verbinski to make some huge changes, minimizing the character or at least bringing him more in line with a traditional action hero. As you know, that didn't happen and the character went on to be the centerpiece of the entire franchise. And you know what, even after years of repetition in the role and countless parodies and things like Epic Movie, Jack Sparrow is still lightning in a bottle in that first film. A performance that's so specific and different from anything else in a blockbuster in 2003, that in retrospect, it just seems so obvious that it would be a huge hit. Then we get to Dead Man's Chest and At World's End, and I feel like it's rarely talked about just how weird these movies are. They were these massive hits that everyone saw, but somehow people just seem to have forgotten how surreal they could be. And honestly, I think time has been really kind to these two. Sure, we're used to massive CG armies, big expensive looking set pieces, but Verbinski does them better than most. They're still really incredible to look at, and to top it off, these movies have some pretty amazing soundtracks. If the first film was a perfectly calibrated action-adventure movie in the vein of Mask of Zorro, 2 and 3 are over-the-top, expensive spectacle of the highest order. Yeah, they're bloated and kind of overstuffed with celebrity cameos and exposition, but I would never accuse them of being boring. Still, for all the high points of these films, I think the cracks were beginning to show. Jack Sparrow had been what people responded to strongest in the first film, so it makes sense that they'd want to put him in the spotlight here. And Depp is still reliably fun in the role, but I feel like all the other characters kind of drifted. Kira Knightley's Elizabeth Swan and Orlando Bloom's Will Turner are key to the success of that first film. Sure, they may not have sold a million Halloween costumes or created half a dozen catchphrases like Jack did, but they provided the narrative backbone of the entire movie. Both characters feel trapped by the circumstances that they were born into. Will, a blacksmith's apprentice, is looked down on a part of a lower social class than pretty much everyone he makes these amazing weapons for. 
Elizabeth feels stifled by the expectations of being a governor's daughter in the 1700s, someone who feels really trapped and has no real say over how she lives her own life. And it's in that context that Jack Sparrow feels like an absolute breath of fresh air. Here is a guy who doesn't care about social status at all, and who constantly makes the men who have been keeping Elizabeth and Will from the lives they actually want to lead look like total morons. It's through Jack that we see the life of a pirate is a lot more free and a lot more fun than anything the couple could have found on land. Jack Sparrow wasn't just great in that first movie because of Depp's weird performance, but also because of his function in the story. Through his Bugs Bunny antics, he shows the main characters that they don't have to be trapped in the lives that they found themselves in. And maybe for the first time on screen since the pirate film craze of the 1940s, he made being a pirate look fun and liberating. But a lot of that slowly disappears over the course of the series, because these movies really lose the thread of who Will and Elizabeth are. Pretty soon they're involved in some extremely convoluted plots, and the film scripts kind of have them running around getting MacGuffins or stabbing people in the back, just because that's what the story needs. That very clear sense of who these characters are and what they really want just goes out the window. From Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean, set sail with Captain Jack as he battles a ghost army. Watch out! You can tell after Jack Sparrow became the character people loved coming out of the first film that Disney just went all in on him. Every other character becomes pretty secondary. With the fourth film, On Stranger Tides, we do away with Elizabeth and Will altogether and stick with Jack and a few returning characters. Gore Verbinski was replaced by Rob Marshall, best known for his film version of the musical Chicago. And I don't know, I just don't think it worked. On Stranger Tides was the most expensive film ever made when it was released, a record that wouldn't be broken until last year with Avengers Endgame. But I think what makes that fact so weird is that it somehow manages to feel small and inconsequential. Like a little side story that would be told in a Pirates of the Caribbean spin-off novel or something. Jack Sparrow works so much better as the most exciting supporting character, not the lead where he's expected to carry the entire film on his back. He's a lot more fun when he feels like a slightly unknowable agent of chaos, since he's just going through the plot mechanics as the lead of the film. The fifth movie, Dead Men Tell No Tales, really felt like it came and went without much audience interest. The lowest grossing film since the first one, I actually think it's slightly better than Tides. The new lead, Henry Turner, is pretty boring, all things considered, but he allows Jack Sparrow to return to the chaotic supporting character role where he always works best. Combine that with more to do for Jeffrey Rush, who is always a good time as Captain Barbosa, and I think this is a pretty solid sequel, even if it still kind of feels like an echo of the series' glory days. A new force of evil is arising. Every pirate must band together to fight his dark magic. In the end, I feel like Pirates of the Caribbean's biggest strength kind of turned into the thing that crippled the series. Jack Sparrow. Disney knew they had a massive fan favorite with that character, and they made the entire series center around him. And I get why, but ultimately, I think they ended up doing these movies a disservice. Depp's Jack Sparrow performance is a great collection of tics and weird mannerisms, but now it kind of feels like old hat. People have been there and seen that, and in the four films since the first one, they've kind of shown how little they care about the other leads. Tossing out Will and Elizabeth, and not really replacing them with anyone nearly as memorable. The Pirates of the Caribbean franchise could have been a great ensemble series with a stable of memorable characters. But it settled for being the Jack Sparrow show, and now it's struggling to be seen as anything else. But okay, if you've had your fill of Hollywood pirates, why not check out the real world history that inspired them? A documentary I loved recently was Hamburg Port, Giant of the North. It's an amazing portrait of this port city in the last 800 years, and the merchants, soldiers, and of course pirates who shaped it. I love docs that really trace the history of one particular place or thing, and this does that really well. But that's just one of thousands of documentaries CuriosityStream has on all kinds of topics. Right now, you can get an entire month free, and after that an annual subscription is only $19.99. 
It's a great deal, and when you sign up, you'll also have access to Nebula, a streaming service just for YouTubers with exclusive videos from creators like me, Just Right, and Lindsay Ellis, among a ton of others. So get a free month of Curiosity Stream by going to curiositystream.com slash Captain Midnight and using promo code Captain Midnight. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 Flight Patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once, because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started, because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes. To